Well, that violence in Jos has increased pressure for a decision to be made on whether the sick Nigerian president, Umaru Yaradua, can continue to lead. The High Court has given the cabinet 14 days to decide. The political limbo has led to almost daily protests across Nigeria. And joining us now to discuss Nigeria's mounting problems is Ayo Johnson. He's a specialist in African affairs from the media agency Africa Inform International. Ayo Johnson, so the cabinet has two weeks to decide whether Yaradua is fit to govern. What, what is likely to be their decision? I mean, how do they make a decision when they can't actually even see the man? Absolutely. The cabinet haven't literally seen him. They're relying on the, the doctors who've actually seen him. Uh, there's a, five doctors, of which one of them is actually the physician, personal physician of the president, and they will be able to give, them, give him a testimony of how they think his perception is and how fit he truly should be in terms of leading the country, and they would make that final decision. Um, and again, it, it, they don't have a choice. This is a federal decision from, from a court which has requested that that happens now. So given that it's Yaradua's own doctors, are we assuming they're going to say that he's fit to carry on? Or is, 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 there, any, is, there, any, I mean, is there any doubt about that? That's what I'm asking. Well, it's very difficult to say because mm. no one has seen him. Mm. Um, uh, the, what we have heard, we've heard him speak on other networks um, saying that he's well or is getting better, but it hasn't actually quelled down the, the claims and the counterclaims of him not being that he's dead or he's not fit to govern and, and there's a power vacuum. So um, there, there are these issues which have got to be resolved, but nonetheless, it, it means that his deputy, um, um, Jonathan, is actually um, uh, has been given some level of powers to at least be able to govern in the short term, but to be actually be able to control the country properly, he needs formal powers. Powers. Should he take over, it does cause other problems though, doesn't it? Because it, it, it upsets the, the, the Christian Muslim balance in the way the country is governed. Just, just explain that. It is quite complicated, but basically they, they, they swap around, don't they? Absolutely. The PDP, which has been in power um, ever since, that, um, since 1999, when civilian rule followed in Nigeria, um, they've got this system of rotation between the north, which is predominantly the Muslims, and the south, which is predominantly Christians. And currently we have a situation where in the north, um, the northern leader, Adwa, is actually present, and we've got the south, Jonathan being in the south. So basically, next term around, which is next Next elections that are due next year, we'd expect that, assuming the PDP wins, for that rotation to happen, whereby we may have a southern leader. Um, if if Jonathan were to be rushed in now and he becomes president by default, be that Ad was ill, it means that that cycle of rotation which has been in place would be would be affected. And the question is, how does the rest of the party respond? Naturally, we're expecting that there's some hard line elements within the party who would not be very happy for a southerner to come in at this junction breaking the cycle and it makes it even far complex should that happen that leading on to elections next year which of the cycles do you choose Indeed. do you choose the one that you've adopted now or do you choose the one which has started much much earlier and then the effect on each side's supporters as well and how they're going to respond to whatever decisions are, uh, are taken i mean the political vacuum itself that we've had for the past two months has it in any way exacerbated, do you think, the violence that we've seen in Joss? Because Joss was known, obviously, to be unstable and has seen violence in the past, whether uh, a leader has been fully in power or not. Absolutely. Um, well, we've had endless problems with Joss leading on from 2001, leading on 2004, 2008, and more so recently now, where we've had thousands of people died, unnecessarily so, due to religious violence. And um, again, it's, it's not just the religious violence itself, there are some deep-seated issues which have not been addressed by the government. And these issues to do with um, poverty, inequality, access to jobs. And what you find is that youths who are disillusioned and cut off from the rest of the country or in the system itself um, propel these sort of violence and actually take the anarchy to the communities. And, cause frustration and anarchy for everyone. And what we have currently is people leaving Joss in, in fear. Um, uh, and and it, it's a concern all around. But it also shows that there's a lack of leadership. There's a lack of leadership at the federal level because the government clearly, even with this administration and the previous ones, have not been able to stem this problem over 10 years. And there's also a lack of leadership at the local level. And more so, the, the leaders, the, the, the imams and the, the priests on both sides have not done enough for their people, I'd have thought. Hi, right, Johnson. Thanks very much indeed for explaining that so clearly. Appreciate it. All right, time for a break here on this hour of news. When we come back, we'll update the headlines. Also, we'll bring you a story about...